Traditionally, wildlife management and conservation has been funded almost exclusively with dollars generated through hunting and fishing. Today, the increasing scope and complexity of wildlife management has led to the need for additional sources of revenue. Funding for wildlife, this week on Wyoming Wildlife TV. The North American model of wildlife management includes one of the most successful funding models ever. The North American model of wildlife management has been around for a couple of centuries or more in, in the United States. Basically, when the people that came and settled this country, they came from Europe in a place where wildlife was pretty much controlled by the king, the average individual had little opportunity to enjoy wildlife. So when the people settled this country, they wanted to take a different approach, and that's the North American model. And basically, in essence, what the North American model says is that wildlife will be available to everybody on an equal basis. And at the same time, the North American model assures a system whereby wildlife will be maintained in abundance and diversity for all people to enjoy. The North American model's importance, I think, is uh, emphasized by its success. Uh, it's, there is no other model in another place or time that has been as successful as the North American model, and that in itself speaks to the importance of it. It uh, basically recovered a, a uh, wildlife population that was essentially decimated in the, at the turn of the 19th century. The history of wildlife conservation in Wyoming is not unlike the history of, of wildlife conservation across the West. There were a few fledgling efforts around 1900 to begin to conserve wildlife resources which had been devastated over a period of decades. As those efforts gathered steam and began to be more effective, a means was needed to support them through funding. We manage wildlife under the principles of wise use as opposed to preservation. So those two things together in, increase the public's perception of the value of wildlife because one, people value what they own and they value even more what they can use. So that utilitarian value that's provided by the wise use concept of the North American model adds to the public trust. Basically, everybody has access to the wildlife resource under the principles of the North American model. You don't get any special privileges due to some kind of social standing, financial capacity, or some kind of privilege of that nature. Now in Wyoming, we have 800 and some odd species of wildlife. We only hunt or fish or trap for a little over 100 of them, which means that there's 700 and some odd species out there that we don't hunt for, we don't fish for, we don't trap but we are still vested responsibility for. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department has a responsibility in statute to conserve all Wyoming's wildlife. And if you view them just in statute, they're as much responsible for bats as they are for bears, as responsible for egrets as they are for elk. The statutory responsibility remains, but the funding only comes from and has historically only covered those 100 species that we hunt, fish, trap. The model was the collective brainchild of a number of hunter conservationists. The traditional model of wildlife management in North America that we've all gotten accustomed to is the model that we've used all these years in Wyoming. It is the funding of conservation of wildlife and its habitat generally by people who use the wildlife in a consumptive manner, who hunt, who fish, who trap. Uh, and It's been a popular model that developed in the western states uh, and has gone out broadly to the rest of the country's game and fish agencies. We've seen in the last decade or so 
uh, several other states step forward to try to augment their parks funding or their habitat funding through various vehicles, uh, lotteries, sales taxes, um, other general public participation in the financial needs of the program. People don't live in Wyoming for the lights and glitz. They live in Wyoming because of the outdoors and because of the habitat and because of uh, how natural it is and because of the individualism of it. Um, if, if the state government basically leaves them alone but provides for the natural beauty of Wyoming to continue, I, I think we're on the right track. Wildlife has, has been traditionally important to the people who have lived here. It's an ingrained part of our sense of place uh, here in Wyoming. And if we didn't have wildlife, we'd be a very lonely group of people uh, out here. The core principles of the North American model and modern adaptations when Wyoming Wildlife TV returns. One of the basic principles of the North American model relies on sportsmen as the primary contributors to wildlife management through sales of hunting and fishing licenses and through special taxes on outdoor equipment. Uh, sports persons, hunters and anglers provide the primary source of funding for the North American model. That's done in either license fees paid for the privilege to hunt or fish or the excise taxes that are collected on hunting and fishing equipment. When the Wyoming Game Fish Commission was created in the 1930s, people uh, never saw a limit to wildlife habitat. It was simply everywhere. Well, currently, about 25% of the state is being fairly heavily impacted by energy development. In addition to energy development, we're having rural development. And so we're losing valuable wildlife habitat, and we'll be spending much more time and effort in the future addressing that loss of habitat, whether it's brought about by industrial expansion, rural development, or climate change as we see decreased moisture and increased temperatures and the result changes on the landscape. The people of Wyoming have been able to rely on the Game and Fish Agency in a way that they really only notice something's wrong if it starts to run into trouble, either with money or with manpower or with federal regulation. Uh, we've been really fortunate to be able to just take that for granted for many decades now. And the, the truth is we can't take it for granted anymore. These resources are fragile. Our ecosystem in Wyoming is very fragile, very susceptible to drought and erosion and wildlife disease. The wildlife in Wyoming want to live in the same places that the home builders want to live and in the same places that the energy industry wants to drill and in the same places that the highway department wants to expand their highways. It's a great big state, but the places that really matter to wildlife are in these narrow corridors and special ecosystems that are super important at specific times of year. We can't take for granted anymore that all those conflicting management pressures and human desires and natural phenomena are gonna work together cooperatively uh, without a big infusion of public participation and, and financial support. Uh, we need to stop taking the agency for granted and start uh, looking at them as doing the Lord's work and pitching in and doing our part. Game and Fish has gone through boom and bust with regard to their funding cycles. Uh, the legislature has jealously uh, uh, safeguarded its right to set hunting fees and that has been really the only type of control traditionally that it has had over Game and Fish funding. And at times, because of perceived disputes with Game and Fish, the legislature has refused to raise those license fees at times, and it has resulted in a budget crunch for the Game and Fish Department. The North American model is evolving to keep pace with the expanding scope and costs of wildlife management. Wildlife conservation was funded almost exclusively by hunters and anglers in a very direct manner, either through the purchase of licenses and tags or through federal aid and fish and wildlife restoration programs. We inherited the North American model from people who did hard purposeful work. Some of the greatest leaders in conservation history are the people who developed that model. We own it now.
and it's up to us to maintain what we inherited from them. And let's not let this thing become compromised on our watch. Now, an increasing amount of a wildlife conservation agency's time and efforts are devoted to things that they weren't doing in 1976. They're devoted to programs that uh, benefit species that we don't hunt or fish for. Although hunters and anglers have traditionally paid for the management of all the wildlife, it simply doesn't seem realistic nor quite honestly fair to expect hunters and anglers to continue to pay for all wildlife conservation in the new century. And so we have been striving for uh, a broader funding base in which the broader general public, those who don't necessarily hunt and fish but who do have a passion for wildlife, pay part of the bill. The North American model has been very successful for generations, and it continues to form the foundation of wildlife management and conservation. But the need for additional funding is leading to modifications Sorry, of the Gil. model. Sorry. This historical approach doesn't work anymore for the most part. Uh, and we've come, as, as the legislature and the executive branches have come to realize that in the last few years. Um, the, the financial crunches have become more severe. Um, at the same time uh, that there's been more demands on the Game and Fish Department to manage wildlife, especially for, uh, for species that are not hunted, uh, the number of hunting licenses and fishing licenses have gone down. The current funding model for the agency is inadequate and probably hasn't been adequate for some years now uh, because the agency is one of the most fiscally responsible and very conservative uh, agencies in state government. They've been able to move forward uh, on to their highest priority uh, management goals, um, but it, it's been fighting rear guard action, there have been attrition cutbacks, there are fewer services to the license buying public that the agency is able to afford to provide. Uh, so it, it's, it, it, it's not adequate now, it hasn't been for a little while and it's going to get more inadequate as time goes on, probably at an increasing rate. Finding additional means of funding when we return. Traditional means of funding are no longer adequate in the increasingly complex world of wildlife management. Most everybody in Wyoming lives here for the same reasons. Open spaces, abundant and diverse wildlife. Only a percentage of our population hunts and fishes, although it's a fairly high percentage in comparison to what's going on in the rest of the country. At the same time, we are going through the same decline, particularly in hunting participation, that's occurring across the nation. Since most of the people that live in Wyoming like wildlife and enjoy seeing wildlife abundance and diversity, it only seems fitting that they should be willing to share in the cost of managing that resource. My vision of funding is funding that's stable and that's sufficient in order to preserve these wildlife populations. And I think it's more important to have that sufficient funding and that effective management in periods in which Wyoming is growing and booming, such as what we're going through right now with the energy boom. There is a lot of pressure on wildlife, not only with the additional people coming in, but also with the competing land uses that competes with wildlife for sufficient habitat. And as a result, we need to have the vision as backed up by the money in order to preserve our wildlife during, during these critical times. Uh, the vistas, the mountains, the deserts, uh, the wide open spaces, the, uh, the historic gold mining towns and the forts are all part of our landscape, but none of them are more important than the wildlife. People come from all over the world to see our wildlife because they understand, just from the images that we market, that's an ingrained part of the landscape in Wyoming. Various companies, whether it's the energy industry or manufacturing, when they want to bring people to the state of Wyoming and have them relocate here, the quality of life is something that ranks right up there with salaries in, in our livable communities. 
uh, that, that we uh, market to individuals, uh, that Wyoming is a great place to live. And so why, uh, certainly the wildlife is, is something that we promote right along with uh, so many other parts uh, of Wyoming that makes it such a high quality place to live. Right now, I, I think that the state of Wyoming is being proactive with regard to its wildlife. And that's because it's just so damn important to us. The Wyoming Game and Fish Commission must decide where and how to spend its limited resources for the management and conservation of many species. In order to try to ensure that Game and Fish Commission and the department maintain as much independence as possible, we have targeted that general fund money to specific non-game types of programs and hopefully the legislature then will limit its oversight, specific oversight of the expenditure of that money to those specific projects and not get involved in, in overseeing the entire operations of game and fish, including area where politics really doesn't uh, deserve to be. Other states have received funding through lotteries and other methods. It's my hope that at some point the people of Wyoming will convince their elected representatives to provide some dedicated form of uh, funding to this agency and what form or for how that might come remains to be seen but I think the interest is there and I have hope that it'll come to pass. There's been a lot of discussion about where new funding sources can come from for game and fish and for associated habitat programs. Uh, some have been tried at the legislature, others have been floated as ideas. Uh, some probably will be tried at the legislature and others will probably be discarded as being too politically difficult, but it ranges from a surcharge on mineral or oil and gas production in the state to property and sales taxes, add-ons uh, to those programs. Lottery has been tried several times as a potential solution, uh, which gets caught between the people who don't want a lottery and the people who want a lottery that would pay for something different. Uh, trust funds, like the Wildlife Trust Fund, are an increasingly popular solution for legislators to earmark money, and one avenue that's working now is to put robust new amounts of investment into the Wildlife Trust Fund every year so that there'll be greater amounts of grant funding available. We focus pretty much uh, the last century on those species that we hunt, fish, and trap. We will continue to do that into the future because those are the people who have consistently paid for wildlife management in this state. But into the future we will spend more effort focusing on those species that certainly have the potential to be listed under the Endangered Species Act and we'll be focusing more efforts on suites of species as it relates to individual habitat types in order to try to be more effective with our resources. There have not been meaningful ways for other people, people who may care a great deal about wildlife and wild places, to contribute to wildlife conservation. That's been one of the challenges of the late 20th century. As we move into the 21st century, I believe one of the challenges facing us will not just be funding the conservation of those other 700 odd species in Wyoming, but bringing the quality of the information that we have available for those 700 odd species up to the same level that we have for those species which have enjoyed the bulk of the funding uh, up to this point. I think we're in transition from a very traditional model supported lar largely by hunters and anglers to a model that is more broadly supported among a host of different folks in Wyoming, both resident and non-residents. The Wyoming legislature's efforts to help fund wildlife work when Wyoming Wildlife TV returns. The Wyoming Legislature has adopted some additional means of funding, such as the Wildlife and Natural Resource Trust. Funded by interest earned on a permanent account, donations, and legislative appropriations, the program helps enhance and conserve wildlife habitats and natural resource values throughout the state. The home run that I think that the Legislature and the Governor hit uh, was the establishment of the Wildlife Trust Fund. 
the idea is over a series of years, we're going to put $200 million into that trust fund and that the interest off of it will go towards wildlife habitat and wildlife preservation projects throughout the state of Wyoming. Uh, a separate board was established in order to manage that money. Uh, the fund was not set up through the Game and Fish Department, but certainly Game and Fish Department as, as well as local conservation agencies and groups throughout the state of Wyoming can apply for the funds uh, and for grants year in and year out through the income that's generated from that endowment. The way that the, uh, the Wildlife Trust Fund works is that the legislature appropriates a certain amount of money to a trust fund that's managed by our state treasurer. And then the income from that trust fund is used uh, to provide grants to various entities throughout the state of Wyoming to preserve habitat, to enhance the habitat for wildlife, and uh, sometimes just to preserve our natural resources uh, and the connection to wildlife is, is not as, as direct. But in any event, the uh, wildlife benefits from all these projects. Uh, as a result of putting more money into that wildlife trust fund over the last few years, the income has increased and we've been able to provide greater amounts of grants to worthwhile projects that cover the entire state of Wyoming. Wyoming having a general fund program like the Wildlife Trust Fund has been an innovation. We were actually the first state to create a program like that that's funded by the general taxpaying public and not by lottery ticket buyers or by people purchasing retail goods. Uh, and I think that'll be a model that other states will look at in the future as well uh, in order both to get more money in and to broaden the range of the public that's actually participating in funding these needs. And many of us are going to continue to push until we get the full $200 million in it. It may take a few years, but that's okay. Uh, it, uh, everybody is learning as we're going along on this wonderful program. And the folks who have been elected to the board to oversee this program and the executive director they hired are top notch. And so far in the first few this years, nice the look. projects yeah. that we have funded from that endowment have made a substantial difference for wildlife in the state. The state of Wyoming is on a good curve in terms of income because of assets in the energy field. So I think the state's gonna be enjoying the benefits of surpluses over the next five or six years. That gives us the luxury of giving money, putting more money into the Wildlife Trust Fund and funding game and fish to, to the extent that I think they really deserve to be funded. I feel it's part of my job to continually try to find uh, non-traditional funding that's also non-political. Uh, in other words, a source of funding that is not controlled by the appropriations process. You know, as we move forward into the 21st century, uh, people throughout the country, indeed I think throughout the world, are going to start to realize how valuable wildlife is because they're going to start to miss it. Um, as a result of global warming and some of the other cha environmental challenges that we're facing around the world, we could have some mass extinctions that are going to occur in the next several decades. And many times we don't truly miss something or appreciate its value until it's gone or nearly gone. I think that Wyoming will increasingly become a reservoir of biological diversity uh, throughout the world and we need to work hard to maintain that. That's gonna be our legacy. That's gonna be the legacy of the energy boom that we're going through right now, and we're putting our money where our values are when we've established that Wildlife Trust Fund. Our challenge now, in the 21st century, is to, to develop fair and equitable ways to pay for conservation of the other 700 and some odd species. Now, in, in, in Wyoming, We've done a, a wonderful job of taking steps to do that. Have they been easy? No. Will they, will they be easy in the future? No. But I think we're, we're, we're making sound, solid, and sustainable progress. Wildlife is important to the people of Wyoming and fundamental to the state's economy. But the future of wildlife hinges on adequate funding to support management and conservation. With far-sighted leadership and innovative approaches, we can secure the future of Wyoming's wildlife for the long term.